everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lauren Thorne. With me, as usual, are my guys, Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. And we're coming off a pretty disheartening loss uh, to the Washington Commanders, uh, where in which, you know, we had very a, a lot of stuff to, to discuss, right? Uh, there was some self-inflicted wounds, again, as we generally talk about on a week-to-week -week basis, it seems like this year, self-inflicted wounds, which ended up costing the Colts uh, a victory, but overall, Gerard, what do you think of the game this past Sunday? Uh, I, I know. I mean, we talked about it being a defensive battle. I mean, that's what it came down to. I mean, at the end of the day, when it's you know low scoring, uh, tight games like that, you know, normally it's going to come down to that last drive, and it's it's basically between what defense can make a stop at the end. And you know, it was just one of them one of them games. I felt so bad, you know, just as a you know former player and knowing how those type games can be and how it ended it up, how it end up uh, the final the way that it did. Man, I felt horrible because uh, you know those guys on the defensive side of the ball played extremely hard, played good enough to win. Well, really not good enough to win because obviously we didn't. But at that that same token, we played winning football uh, at the end of the day. But uh, I mean, sometimes games go like that, close games, you know, last minute type type situations that happen uh offensively you know a little better rhythm uh still turning the ball over you know a little bit so i mean that still was a uh, uh, the theme that continued this whole season. Uh, but I did think that Sam competed well. I think that he at least showed that, you know, he can play on this league. He can play in this at this level and he can, uh, you know, be the starting quarterback going forward. But uh, we definitely wanted to win that one. Uh, it was just heartbreaking the way that we lost. Yeah, Rodney, uh, well, how's your feelings after <laughs> the game, man? Because I know it's it's got to be disappointing, right? After the effort that you guys put out there. Yeah, it was, that that one was hard. Uh, you know, I think for us as a as an an entire team, particularly defensively, to um, play well for a majority of the game, and you know now uh, the ball is kind of in your hand to to close it out, and we wouldn't want it any other way, and we just we didn't make enough plays on that last that last drive uh, when they had the ball and. Obviously, man, uh, tough grab by McLaurin. I mean, Gilly's right there. I mean, I, I think, shoot, if I'm a bad man and, and Gilly's put in that position again, he comes down with it. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's another great player. And, and you know, you got to tip your hat to him and also uh, Heineke, man, for extending plays and, and finding this guy. Um, so it was heartbreaking. It, it was hard for me to even watch the game, to be honest. I'm a guy who who likes to watch the game, you know, afterwards, you know, that evening or night. Uh, but I, I couldn't stomach it, <laughs> to be honest mm -hmm. with you. It just was – it was one of those type of games where you felt like, man, everything seemed like it was clicking. You know, the offense, you know, found their rhythm. They hit their stride. We got some momentum. And seven minutes left, you know, we're up 16 to seven. And, and you know, it's looking like it's it's going to be a celebration uh, when we get back in that locker room. And um, the opposite, it was it was complete silence, man, just in shock, really, of, of what happened. And uh, now, you know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better. You know, my, my heart obviously was was hurting um the past couple of days but you know how it goes man it's, it's a 24-hour rule gotta move on uh you gotta clear your mind and prepare for the next opponent because it's the same mindset you know i was talking to matt ryan about it regardless of success or, or failure that you have you know that previous week you gotta reset you know what i'm saying and prepare yourself for the next opponent yeah. you whether you're coming off a, a a great victory, you can't get too high on yourself and think that you got it because you you never have it, or whether it's a disappointing loss, you know the way that we had in, in closing seconds of the game, you got to pick yourself up off the off the ground, man, because nobody's gonna feel sorry for you and get ready and figure out how you can get a win going into this uh this this uh, next Sunday. Speaking of this Sunday, it's another week of betting and basketball is back. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends on 
Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet online, where the game starts. Um, I, I wanted to jump in real quick because there was some, uh, there, there was a little spot in the game where uh, you and another defensive player uh, had a little bit of an altercation. And you, you talk about it, cameras miss nothing. And I was just <laughs> wondering if, if you would like to uh, let the fans out there know a little bit what was going out there on the field, what what the heated discussion was going on, and and, and stuff like that. Yeah, man, I mean, you get into to the game and you're obviously out there to win. And, you know, I think one of those, uh, Bobby, you know, that's that's my little bro, man. Uh, very, very good player, as we all know, heavy hitter for our defense. Uh, but, you know, time to time, we have a lot of those moments throughout the season this far, you know, where we don't see things necessarily the same way. Um, and, you know, we got to like we got to iron it out. He's a guy. He's a prideful guy. He's from Stanford. I'm a prideful dude. I'm from Virginia. You know, so we both feel like nobody's trying to nobody's trying to give. But in that moment, it literally was just about communication, uh, making sure we was all on the same page. Um, and, you know, it was it, it obviously I mean, we won that down, uh, but it's just heat of the battle, man. You get out there, emotions are running high. Uh, we're all trying to win and we just want to make sure, look, there's no margin uh, for error. Right. Uh, the way that, you know, we're playing right now and defensively, like we understand that. So we can't we can't have any mishaps, any miss ops. And so uh, that's all that was, man. At the end of the day, it was a few seconds later. It was like, man, I love you, bro. You know, it's all love here. We good. Uh, everybody's just everybody's just, uh, you know, what I'm saying just trying to win, dog. And and it, it was cool. Man, that that's uh no, no Draymond, no Draymond, no, man. No Draymond. That's what that's what that's what I was about to say. I was about to yeah, say we coming, ain't doing none of that. <laughs> coming off the Draymond, but man, if the cameras could catch more of those uh situations, those little arguments on the sideline, it wouldn't even be a big deal now uh about stuff like that happening. It happens all the time. But the one thing I will say that's a positive when you see things like that is it wasn't like, you know, it was 49 points given up on the on the defense and we got guys out there arguing, trying to figure out yeah. what's going on. We're talking about a defense that was playing pretty dominant and guys are still passionate about going out there and making sure everybody's doing their job the correct way. So it's always a good problem to have, especially when you're playing good ball. It just shows that the players care. Absolutely. You know what? You know, there was uh, we was talking about, you know, those last two drives where, you know, the defense gave up. Uh, the 10 points and, 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 and ended up losing the game. But of course the, the Colts offense didn't move the ball either, but here's, here's something that, that is big time noticeable to me that the pressure wasn't quite there the last couple drives. And it seemed like after Ty went down with that knee injury, that a lot of the gas came out of that defensive line. How important has Tyquan Lewis been stepping in, uh, for Quiddy Pay this off season or that this season right now, and what's the loss? His loss. Uh, how does that affect the defense moving forward? Yeah, Taekwon's a hell of a player for us, um, and man, my heart goes out to him. You know, I've I've been in that position where you know you battle back from from one injury, and you know injury occurs on on on. Um, on that following season, right, and and the opposite knee, so I, I I've lived that, and you know just keep him uplifted and encouraged, man, and he's meant a lot to our defense. Uh, very uh, versatile D lineman can play outside, can play in the interior on third down situations to create a a, a matchup issue, you know, versus a guard. He has that skill set, man, and ability. And so, you know, when you lose someone like that, you know, it's hard to replace. But, you know, that's the, the good thing about creating depth, right? Um, not having, you know, we missed Quiddy for some time, you know, but now he's getting close to, you know, returning and coming back and, and, and being that player that, 
that he was, you know, for us before the injury. And then you add, you know, Ben and, and Dio and, and Fadi and all those guys and, and guys have been getting a lot of uh, playing time, man. So it's a next man up mentality right now. We're going to ask them to increase their rep count, uh, be, you know, productive for us the same way that Ty was. Um, and not only in the passing game, but also Ty was very effective in the run game as well. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a missing piece. It, it happens a lot in the league, unfortunately. Um, and this is where uh, somebody else gets the opportunity to shine, man. Um, but like I said, Ty was an incredible player. Um, and, you know, hoping that he he makes a, a speedy and healthy recovery. Hey, Gerard, I got a question for you. Thank you for watching Gerard Powers and I here on Believe in Colts, part of the Believe Podcast Network. Don't forget to smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time we upload a video or go live. And don't forget you can hit that little red share button. Help us out a lot with exposure and getting our stuff out to more fans. Now, let's get back to the video. The firing of the offensive coordinator, Gerard, uh, today, literally like right before uh, the end of the the trade deadline uh in your past experience is is that a is that a bad sign when a, a move like that happens like right in the middle of the season uh the the only way i would put it as a bad sign is like we're in a position where we got to show some urgency to get things figured out on that side of the ball so normally you know when moves like this happen it's coming from top down so i'm pretty sure it's coming from ursay and you know going down the ladder or whatnot and when you're bent when you've been kind of inconsistent on the offensive side of the ball and then the record is what it is and like you say it's a lot of pressure on like we talked about it a few pods ago to where it's a lot of pressure on certain guys in the building to, to make sure that this team performs at the level that it needs to perform. So once you start seeing coaches getting fired and, and things like that within the season, it just shows you that the whole front office is trying to show a, a, a boost of urgency to try to figure this thing out before it's too late uh, at the end of the day. And, uh, and I'm not going to sit here and say that it was the OC's fault, the reason why, you know, things are the way they are, because I'm pretty sure he's not the one that's calling plays at the moment. But, you know, normally when, when you're having, uh, you know, guys lose their job, especially in the middle of the season, you know, it's not a great sign on, on how the team's doing, but it's also a sign of urgency uh, trying to figure it out because we're still in the thick of it. I mean, I know, I know we lost this past week, but it still don't, don't, um, I guess changed the fact that we still got a lot of football to play and uh, still in the middle of where we need to be in far as uh, making it to the playoffs. Okay. Okay. There was a lot of questions about that actually, you know, the OC's not the one calling plays What is a scapegoat, you know, that word's been thrown around quite a bit, uh, no. but I think I think it's just more of a the situation. I don't want to say it's a scapegoat. Like like you say, it's not just one person. You know, you know that, that got all the the problems. But what it does do, uh, in my opinion, is just put more of a microscope uh, microscope back on Frank, because uh, now it's not going to be any other person you can kind of point the finger to or or whatever the case may be. But I I don't want to necessarily look at the firing as a scapegoat. Like, this is the reason why the offense, you know, hasn't performed at the level. I mean, everybody got their hand in it at the end of the day. But when you're losing games, when things kind of been up and down a little bit, at some point, you know, people are going to start making moves and trying to, you know, like I said, get this thing figured out. Absolutely. Rodney, um, I meant to ask this last week. I never really got to it. Uh, being, you know, there was so much to discuss. But uh, with the Colts moving on from Matt Ryan midseason, uh, there was quite a few veteran players that came to the team uh, because Matt Ryan was was grabbed to be the quarterback, or at least was one of the reasons why they came in. And now that they, you know, have moved on from Ryan and have Sam Ellinger now listed as the starter for the rest of the season. Uh, I know you can't speak for the other veterans on the team uh, that came in this past off season, but just in general, what's the mindset now uh, moving forward with, with the new quarterback? I think the new mind, I mean, the mindset is you support, you know, who's ever uh, QB one. 
Uh, you support who's ever at any position on the team, yeah. right? Because as we know, uh, nothing is guaranteed uh, as you go into a season, right? Like injuries occur, uh, changes happen, and it's a, it's a part of the game. And nobody necessarily signed up. You signed up to be a part of the team and you do whatever is best for the team. And so uh, every player that we have uh, from, you know, starter down to the third, the third string or the third spot, you know what I'm saying? Backups, like you support everyone the same way and it's a brotherhood and we're in this together at the end of the day. So uh, for us, uh, nothing really changes. The mindset is, you know, championship. The mindset is, um, uh, getting a, a seat, a, a ticket to the dance, you know, into the playoffs. And so if, you know, we feel as though uh, Sam gives us that best opportunity at this time to do that, uh, then we support him and we support um, everybody the same way. And we rally for him. And, you know, coming off this game, it was, it was disappointing because I, I felt Sam played very well uh, in his first outing uh, as a, as a starter. Uh, you know, I, th I think as the game went on, you saw his confidence begin to grow. He he looked a lot more comfortable moving in the pocket and um, finding guys. And and you felt, you know, what I'm saying the the, the momentum, uh, you know, shift uh, towards us. And 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 it was just um, unfortunate that we as a defense kind of let him down uh, and and let you know the offense down and and didn't allow him to get his first victory but hoping that this Sunday man he, he'll be able to go ahead and get his first win uh, as a starter Gerard is there anything you want to discuss about this past game or anything that that, that transpired from it uh no nah, I mean that, that's pretty much the gist of it I mean the I mean everybody know where we're at in the season uh if there's one thing I would ask Rodney is just uh, coming off a loss like like that, you know, close loss, a loss that we feel like we definitely should have won. Uh, you mentioned that in the locker room it was dead silence. What was the message once the leader started to talking about moving forward and how you get over a loss like this? Because this type of loss can hurt the team. When I say hurt the team, I'm talking like more so emotional. Like this one you can feel for a long time because everybody knows – how hard it is to win in this league. And when you got certain games like in the grips of your hand and you, it slips out at the end, it can it kind of can be devastating. So what was the message going forward on how to get over this hump? Uh, really, the message was you know, we honestly felt as though, you know, we beat ourselves and uh, the leaders on the team, the guys that we rely on, you know, we have to do better. And that and I think yeah, you know, the message was given to us by, by Z, uh, Zaire Franklin, and, you know, him really taking on and, and feeling as though the, the defense was responsible, you know, for, for what happened. And, you know, we don't take that lightly. You know, it's a, we're a prideful defense. Um, and, you know, we understand that in those moments, man, we have to close the game out. Uh, right now, you know, we are um, the, the backbone of this team. And for us to now have that opportunity, you know, at the end of the game, the way that we want it, you know, we got to find a way to finish. And so moving forward, I think, you know, going into the team meeting, it, it really just came down to how do we focus on the, the details and being critical of ourselves in, in, in all facets when it comes to uh, technique, you know what I'm saying? Are we being disciplined in a lot of areas? Because that's, you know, that's ultimately what it comes down to, uh, you know, just looking at the tape. We just were undisciplined at the wrong times, you know, and I'm speaking defensively specifically. And I, I think that message was poured into us as a team collectively. Uh, but, you know, we just have to get, uh, we have to be better there knowing that, uh, you know, margin error is, is small. So just mm -hmm. focus on the little things this week. Uh, lock back in, man, and, and get on the road and uh, get a win. All right, one last question from me about uh, not necessarily the game, but today, the 4 o'clock deadline. Uh, what's it like for a player as a, as a trade deadline goes down and, 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 you know, rumors are starting to spread? I know you guys try to <laughs> avoid that kind of stuff, you know, but yeah. you, you, you know 
teams are calling other teams talking about possibly moving players and stuff around uh, how, how does how do players deal with that do they just do their best to just be like no that's not really part of what's going on in my life <laughs> uh, I know from my experience, I mean, you definitely hear uh, the rumors when it when you're talking about being traded. Uh, sometimes it can co- it can come out of left field and uh, you might not see it com- coming. But a lot of times your agent is going to be involved in some of those talks uh, anyway. So for most, you kind of can you kind of know what's about to happen or got an idea if it's going to happen or not. But as a player that's not about to get traded or not involved in the rumors, Uh, I mean, it's day to day business, man. I mean, at the end of the day, until somebody tells you different, you go about your job and your routine, you know, as as you would any other day. So uh, it's something that I think every player kind of understands is just part of the business. Uh, You might wake up one morning and your locker, your, your locker neighbor might not be there, you know, whether it's being cut, whether it's being traded or hurt or whatever the case may be. So as a player individually, you just kind of just focus on what you can control and everything else, you know, you just know it comes with the territory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that, that's good information. Thank you. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode where uh, we kind of just went over the loss to the Washington commanders. That was a tough one. Uh, tough one. A very tough. tough. One. Uh, it, it was it was the one game this year. I felt like the Colts. I, I felt like as a team, the Colts really. This was the game that that they outplayed the opponent and should have yeah. won, and they let it go. You know, uh, and it, it 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 hurts. It hurts. Uh, but hey, like Rodney said, it's just time to move on and prepare for the next game. And that's who a hated rival. For just about every team in the NFL. Uh, <laughs> so uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, this was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. I'm Lawrence Owen, and that is Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 